Hi, I'm Darnell with Wheel of Recipes, and this is my review of the Ninja Wood Fire Outdoor Grill. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Okay, so with things unboxed, you want to avoid undoing the tape. You want to leave the tape on while you get the handles assembled. So now I'm going to go ahead and get the handles assembled onto the grill. So to get the handles assembled, they basically say you're supposed to turn it over and then you should have an easier time getting these handles in. And they also give you a little tool here to get the handles put in. So I'm gonna flip it on over now because they say it's easier that way. They say if you remove your tape, then you want to, I guess, try and get all the accessories and whatnot out before you start trying to attach the handles. Yeah, I see it. It definitely is easier from what I'm seeing here to do the handles with the tape and all still on and turned over. It's just going to be faster. And so the handles have a left and right mark on them. If I was facing the other way, this would be my left and this would be my right. So basically what you do is they've got little screws and they've got the little holes there and you can screw them right into the holes here and here and do it on the other side here and here just slide the handle right in there and it slides right in like that and same thing on the other side just slides right in nice and easy and I did check if you do the wrong side it's kind of Seems kind of quirky trying to put it in on the wrong side, so it should just go in flush quick and easy. If you're on the wrong side, you might have some issues, and that could be why. Now that I've got them on both sides, I'm just basically going to go ahead and screw, using the little tool they give, screw things in on both sides. All right, so I've got the handles all screwed in. That's all the assembly that is required. So just getting things flipped back over right side up. So there we go. Completed assembly with handles. I'll go ahead and get the tape and stuff off now and get things out of the inside of here. All right, so I've got my notes here. I just want to go over some things really quick because I want to stress that they make it very clear, very explicit, stated all over the manual and whatnot, that this is an outdoor only cooker. It's not an indoor only, or it's not an indoor optional cooker, I should say. It's outdoor only. It's not like you can use this outdoors and then bring it in and use it when you want inside. And for anybody who wants to try and use it indoors anyway, I can only say you've been warned. I don't uh, support that or condone that, and they make it very clear this is an outdoor only cooker. And basically, if you want an indoor grill, Ninja makes an indoor grill. But this is an outdoor only, regardless the setting you're using, regardless if you're uh, using smoke or not, it doesn't matter. It's still an outdoor cooker. And basically, if you are in a place where an electric grill would work, like you're in an apartment where an electric grill could be used on a balcony or something, then this may be the type of grill for you. This is basically, it's an electric cooker that is a grill and it also has a little bit of smoke feature, but I guess not so much that you would necessarily disturb anybody as you would with like uh, the amount of smoke that comes off a pellet smoker or offset smoker, things like that. And I will mention that I have a whole different uh, channel here called uh, D Grill on, uh, well it's on YouTube and Rumble. I don't have that on BitChute, but I do have Wave Oven Recipes on BitChute too. But on D Grill channel, I use uh, some of the bigger grills and do some big cooks there with those, some of those larger cookers. Now I'm gonna go over some of the, well, try and go over all the accessories that come with the cooker. This is like a drip grease tray and I'll show you how to put that in in a moment. These are the pellets. They say that the pellets, like this, they give you like two bags of pellets, two different 
flavors. So one bag they say is a uh, all-purpose blend and it's balanced, mild, bright and sweet. And they say that it's a blend of cherry, maple and oat. The other one they say is a robust blend, robust, smoky and rich. And it's a blend of hickory, cherry, maple and oat. So the difference here with the one that's got purple on it is that it's got some hickory in it. That hickory is going to give you a more stronger flavor. And so you'd want to use that more with your meats and things. Now they, they basically give you symbols that you can use either one with basically any type of stuff. Like you can use either with anything. But I would recommend for my time smoking and doing lots of smoking of meats, use the hickory when you're doing like, well the one with the hickory, this purple bag, when you're doing like your beef and your chicken. If you're doing like fish and you're doing like uh, veggies, you probably want to use this red bag that has the cherry, maple, and oat because you want something a little stronger going into your, your bigger meats. Also, if you're doing any uh, type of uh, like pulled pork and pork stuff, you can also use the, uh, the hickory one for that to give a little stronger flavor. Although with pork, you could use the cherry maple. You could even use it on the chicken if you want, but you, you probably want to use something a little stronger on the chicken and the beef especially. I would not use beef with cherry maple oat and not include that hickory. And like I said, even with chicken, I would try and make sure I use hickory too. But those are just my recommendations on my D Grill channel. I've got a whole video talking just about pellets for a good long time. So if you thought I talked a long time about pellets here, I could go longer, much longer, but we'll keep that uh, there on the D-Grill channel. So let's look at some of the other um, accessories and things. They give you for documentation, they give you uh, like safety, lots of safety information. They give you a quick start guide and recipe book. Lots of recipes here. Um, some have pictures, some do not. Let's see how many pages this book goes for. It goes to... Well, the recipes end at about uh, page, is it, sorry, about page 30 ends the recipes, and they give some tips, and then they have like, well, no, then they have some more recipes, even page page 30. And then they get into a chart, some charts and things, and rubs and whatnot, but the total book, without the notes, goes for about 55 pages, so... There's a lot in this book to cover and you could review. They also tell you how they install the handles. But let's go over some of these other accessories. This is going to be kind of like your smoke box and I'll show you how to put the smoke box in. Basically the smoke box goes over here on the side, just lift the flap. You lift the flap and it goes right in, it goes right in. And what you do here with this scoop that they give you you want to fill this scoop with pellets and you want to level it off. You want to make sure that it's level. You don't want it to be overrunning with pellets. They try and stress you don't want to overfill with pellets. And then you just take that and you just pour it right in there and then you're ready to start smoking. They also give you this crisper tray which is basically for the air crisp function. And we'll go over what all the functions are like, but air crisp is like air frying. So those are all the accessories that come along with it. I'll show you inside in a moment, but there's like the grill plate inside. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Also for these pellets, they say that the pellets are good for three cooks, but they don't say how long an amount of time is for a cook. So they're not saying like, oh, one fill of pellets is gonna last you two hours, three hours, four hours. They don't say hours, they just say cook. So that's kind of open-ended and really unknown when they just say cooks. They're not really telling you how much time. For anybody who's experienced with uh, smokers and pellets, you want to know on average how much time at a certain temperature an amount of pellets last. And they're not really saying that. They're just saying, oh, one fill of pellets lasts three cooks. That, you know, I guess maybe on you know, whatever average they want to make that out to, but that doesn't really give you any much guidance there. You know, I guess a cook is a cook, and if it goes quick, I guess maybe it'll last. If you're doing something that, you know, would go a long time, who knows. 
Now they do say as far as pellets, make sure that you only use ninja pellets is what they're saying. They say that it was not designed to work with other pellets. So for you who are in the pellet game, you know that you can get lots of pellets, lots of places and lots of different prices and lots of different quality. But they're doing here, Ninja's I think doing, if you're familiar with pellet smokers, they're doing like Traeger and they're saying only use our pellets. Don't use anybody else's pellets. We didn't make this for anybody else's pellets. Is basically what they're saying. And the model that I have here, it doesn't come with the temperature probe. They do make a model of this outdoor grill with the temperature probe if you want that. I have plenty of probes myself, so I'll use my own other probes. And nothing in this video is sponsored, but you can find a link to the Amazon shop in the video description. And there's a thermometer section there. I have lots of thermometers that you can choose from if you want. But it's all up to you. The integrated thermometer is a neat feature if that's what, the way you want to go. Um, I want to show you the power plug. It is a 48 inch power plug, they say. And it's a three prong cord with the ground, dedicated ground wire. And so using this outdoors, if you use an extension cord, you want to make sure that you use an outdoor extension cord that supports three prongs. Don't try and jerry-rig it with anything else. And the cooker is 1760 as far as wattage. And at 1760 watts, that's pretty close to the max you can get for a normal house current. So pretty higher end on the wattage there, and we'll see how that performs for us. And the dimensions of the cooker are 23.62 inches in length, 18.58 inches in width, 13.31 inches in height. And they say that this cooker can grill six steaks, up to six steaks, 30 hot dogs, fry up to three pounds of wings if you're going to use the basket, and it can barbecue smoke a nine, a nine pound whole brisket. So, um... I guess depending on the brisket you're used to smoking, for some of us, if you've seen my D-Grill Channel 9, is a smaller end whole brisket, but you can get a nine pound whole brisket in here. And I'll also do a check and see if like a five pound chicken can fit in here a little later here in this video. And so now I'm just gonna kinda show you around the cooker and also show you how things get put into the cooker and whatnot, like this grease tray. So, basically you see the front, you see the sides, and in the back, we see the back. There's a little exhaust right, let's see if I can show you, right there on the back. That's all the exhaust, and it probably is exhaust coming out of the top too. So, that's probably how it expels and receives air during the cooks through the top and the back. But I forgot to show you on the back here putting in the grease tray. Grease tray, you're just going to slide that in just like that. Slides right in. So we got the grease tray installed. Now as far as inside you could take your basket and you set it there and you're able to do your air frying with the basket there. And I'll just show you right quick and take the plate off. You see under the plate, it looks a little different from the indoor grill, but I'll do a I'll show you a side by side with that in a moment. Now to give you a closer up view of things, basically you can see like your handle and I showed you inside here. I just want to show you up in the hood you've got the fan up there to basically heat things up and this whole hood you know can get hot to create heat so that you get heat on the top and heat on the bottom. Get your closer view inside you can see those heating coils right under the bottom. You see a little drainage back there in the back and so basically when you have this grill plate on there everything's going to drain down through the back and we see up front here we got our control knob this is a wood fire flavor button we'll go over that in some detail later 
got your time, your temp, you got your start stop. And I wanted to show you what the power plug. Power plug has basically like that reset test buttons, reset and test buttons for kind of like if things get blown or something, or I guess maybe you take in too much power or power is irregular or something, you can do like your test and reset there. So that's a look closer up at the cooker and the basket here that you can use inside like that. So that's how things look. Let me show you close up again. It's there. And give you a closer look at the smoker box. So I've got the smoker box already installed. You see that there. So now we have the Ninja Wood Fire Outdoor Grill next to the Ninja Foodie XL Grill and Griddle. And this is the one that has the meat probe and all that good stuff. And this is the indoor grill that you want to use for your indoor grilling. And so basically what I want to do first, just so you see side by side, this outdoor one looks apparently bigger. I do want to mention it has like this sticker on top. It didn't seem like that wanted to come off, so I left that sticker on. I guess if that starts coming off after cooking, I'll remove it. But it seems like it's supposed to remain there, I guess. But the indoor one is just a bit smaller from observation. You do get the griddle with the grill and griddle. You don't get a griddle here. But this griddle plate does look like it would like it be able to be used in there like it would fit so I guess if you have both that might be something to consider trying if you want to try that but you want to try it in this outdoors this is the outdoor cooker now I'm going to go ahead and show you like the plate Let's see if I can get the plate off so for the indoor grill plate you can fit that you can fit that inside of the outdoor grill so Definitely smaller there. I also want to show you for the air fry baskets or the crisper baskets, whatever you want to call it. This is the outdoor one. This is the indoor one. The outdoor one fits snugly. Well, the indoor one fits snugly into the outdoor one. So, indoor is just smaller all around. I'm going to go ahead and do some measurements just so you have some numbers to work with. And let's do the inside here. Inside we got about maybe a little more than 13 inches across that you could work with inside there. Going uh, top to bottom, I'm not going to include the drip area. We've got about nine, about nine inches there. Whereas going across here inside, we've got about a little over 14 inches, just about 14 inches. Let's go further back. Yeah, it's about 14 inches there. And we got a bit more rum from, uh, I don't know if you can see it either way. Can I do it? But here if I, we got about almost 11 inches, about 10 and a half. Yeah, it's 10 and a half going this way. So more room both ways there with the outdoor grill. Now as far as their overall size, just gonna do kind of overall across the top, let me go this way. Across the top, it's about maybe 14 inches. Maybe about 14. This one got handles was more to work with. I'm going to have to kind of guesstimate with the handle. We're talking about 22 inches that way. And the front to back, let's see, that hump back there up to the handle. Looking at about 15 inches. The outdoor, it's got like these feet on the base, kind of extended out a bit out to the handle. It got about, about 17 inches, I'd say. For height, you see that the outdoor one is bigger, taller. The indoor grill, if we consider this kind of top here, maybe we're somewhere just under 13 inches, whereas with the outdoor, we're, let's see, we're just under 15 inches 
what the outdoor grill is, what I'm, what I'm seeing there, just under 15. So those are the measurements. Now this is a five pound chicken here. I'm not going to be cooking this in this video, it's fully frozen. But just want to show you when you put a five pound chicken inside of this one, you, you know, can't even close the thing. I know some of you like the spatchcock and all that, but you know, you can't get it in there whole together like that. Put it into the outdoor one, and let's see, I think, um, I don't think I'm getting, we're getting a snug close, I'm just going to check again. I'm able to close more, but let's see, all right, that's it fully closed there. Let's put the chicken back in. See if yeah, I'm not I'm not able to get it fully snug closed. Yeah, definitely not. Put it in the back. Uh, yeah, now let's see. I guess kind of if I put it in the center and it's uh I guess it's not hitting these guards. So if I put it right in the center, I'm able to I guess pretty much close the thing up. Pretty much. It's not I don't think it's a true snug fully snug closed. Let me see. Well, try again. Yeah, it, it's, it's a bit tricky. I, I wouldn't. No. No. I, I wanted to keep trying. No. Definitely not. Five pound chicken is not fitting well in there in my opinion. I don't, I don't uh, think five pound chicken was made for this going in whole as is. Alright, so basically regardless which one you use, you're going to need a smaller size chicken than a five pounder. And this one will be able to hold something a little larger than this one will as far as chicken. But they do say that the outdoor can hold a nine pound brisket, I guess, you know, fitting that across even if you had to move it a little bit. I'd say worst case scenario you'd have to do something I don't like doing when I cook briskets but you can do and some people like doing it uh, this way you could cut the point from the flat if you know anything about cooking briskets you could cut the point from the flat and cook the two pieces separately and just remove the uh, flat earlier than the point because flat's probably going to cook faster being a leaner cut of meat but basically that gives you some idea about what can fit in this thing as far as cooking and measurements Okay, so now we're outside and I've got the cooker on a flat level surface, which is what they recommend. Don't recall where I got the table from, but you'll have to get a table that's level and can basically handle something like a grill or something that's going to produce heat. I don't know how hot anything will get, but we'll check that out during some testing here. So I'm doing an initial plug-in because I want you to see what happens when I first plug it in. So when I first plug it in here, we have just a little bit of light up there. That's all we get. But I'm going to go ahead and get things set up for a temperature test. So now I have the iGrill 2 here with the temperature probe on the grill grate. And I'm going to go ahead and close up. And we see that the probe is reading about 67 degrees Fahrenheit right now. And not sure how clearly you can see the readout here, but I'll just have to tell you how things look as we go along if you can't see it. But what I'm going to do, well I already had it on grill, but if you turn it off it goes bye bye. So you turn the grill, and it has these settings for grill of different levels like high, medium, low. It doesn't tell you a temperature, it doesn't allow you a temperature setting, but we're going to use grill. And I'm going to set the time up to 30 minutes for us to test things out on grill and see how hot things get. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start now. And it does like this preheat thing. We'll see how hot it reads on the iGrill 2 when it reaches its desired temperature when it's done preheating. We'll also see how long that takes. And we'll see how hot things are as it kind of continues along a little bit. So, we'll let this run. Alright, it's 
it's uh, finished preheating. It's so well saying add food. I'm just going to open it real quick and close it so that it goes into its cooking phase. But I was reading 449 even before I opened the lid. So basically, it's getting to about 450 for my read on that uh, high heat at the preheat point. We'll see if it changes any now. It's starting to kick in a little bit of noise. And I want to do some feeling around. I will say there was some strong odor. You're supposed to do like a burn off before you do any cooking anyway, like on the high temperature setting for like maybe 20, 30 minutes anyway to burn off any, I guess, packing noise. But it's a pretty strong smell. I'll, I'll say that for sure. And there was some smoke coming off of it, you know, even though it, uh, nothing's in it or anything. And I did wash things off before even bringing it out here. So it's uh, definitely an outdoor grill, not an indoor one. But I'm feeling the top. Top here feels cool. This is cool on the top. Right here, yeah, it's kind of hot there. Kind of hot. Feeling around back. It's not too hot in the back. It's kind of warm in the back. Over here on the side, the smoker box. It's just kind of warm. Over here, it's a little warmer over here. Down here, it feels nothing. I don't feel any heat at all. Yeah. I don't feel really any heat at all down here. It, it feels pretty cool down there. Feeling down the bottom of the back, it feels pretty cool down there. So that's pretty interesting. I'm going to just let it continue to run for a while. I'm seeing now it's up to 4. Well, it's looking like it's going up to 490, between 481 and 490. I'm going to let it go for a little bit. And I saw something interesting happening while things are continuing along here. There's been a bee that's been kind of resting on the power cord at times. I know sometimes when I'm doing these reviews, people say, oh, power cord gets hot, power cord gets hot. Well, mine is so cool that an insect was able to just rest on it, and I can feel it's cool. I'll say if you're getting uh, issues where you're using appliances and a power cord is getting hot or having a problem like that, you might want to get the power checked out in your home by a licensed electrician or skilled electrician of some sort. So it's been running in cook mode for 10 minutes now, and the temperature on the iGrill 2 has been hanging out at 490 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically, it's about 450-ish, or near 450 when it's done preheating, but after it gets into cooking on high for a while, I guess it gets closer to 500. I'm just gonna check making changes on the fly. If we hit temp, it goes down to medium, back up to high. I can basically change the time on the fly too. So that changes our time on the fly. And if I open up, let's see, it auto pauses when I open up. So this concludes our temperature test and other checks. So now I've uh, just turned the cooker off for a moment. I'll do some more burn off in a bit uh, off camera, but I want to turn it back on and you see when I turn it back on after turning it off it's back to high in 10 minutes so it doesn't remember anything about the setting that I made for temperature and time it just defaults back so once you turn it off it forgets everything I didn't unplug or anything like that but it just forgets setting it doesn't retain anything All right, now I want to talk to you about the different functions on the cooker here. We go over from off over to grill. And with grill, you use grill when you're cooking big meats and you want to get a sear all the way around. You can keep the hood open while you're grilling when you're cooking smaller meats to avoid overcooking them. Grill does have a preheat. The smoker setting, going over to smoker, Basically, if you want to give smoke flavor to large cuts of meat that you cook slow and low, you can do that. There's no mention of a preheat. You basically just put your food in and let it do its thing. You want to make sure you have your pellets in the pellet hopper there. And there's the air crisp function. And with air crisp, it's like air frying. Like I mentioned, you use the basket. And it has a preheat. The bake function is our next function. And that's if you want to try and make cakes and things in a grill. 
and uh, it uses a lower fan speed. I will say from my experience with the indoor grill, if you're going to try baking, you're going to get some browning on the top, and that's unavoidable. It does have a preheat, but it, you know, the indoor grill can bake, so I'm confident Ninja knows what they're doing as far as making it happen, but expect things to be brown on top for sure. Next we have the roast function, and with the roast function, that's the tenderized meat while cooking it. It has a preheat. Then there's the broil function, and with the broil function, if you want to put a crispy finish on your food, you can use that. There's no mention of a preheat. And the last option is dehydrate, and with dehydrate, um, it looks like there's no preheat if you don't use the smoke fire feature on the dehydrate, but you could use smoke fire, well wood fire, I'm sorry, smoke fire, wood fire, and add some smoke to it, and then it says that you may have a preheat in that regard. The wood fire button can be used to basically add smoke flavor, so like you can use the smoker setting for smoke, that's kind of like a made for smoking setting, but you can also add it to other functions like if you're using grill or air crisp or bake or roast or dehydrate, you can add smoke flavor to those by just hitting that wood fire button and having your pellets already in there to fire things up. So let's look at the, I've already talked about the time and temp and the start stop button so you know about those. I wanted to check the minimum and maximum temp for air fry just or air crisp. So over on air crisp we can go up to 450 and let's see what our maximum time is. Just see what the maximum time allowed is. Maximum time that I can go up to is one hour, 450 one hour. Now I'm going to go down to dehydrate. Things might be a little different on dehydrate. So dehydrate can go as low as, let's see, as low as 80 degrees on the dehydrate. I'm assuming the six is six hours and not six minutes for dehydrate. You would need more time. So it looks like the maximum you can go out to is 12 hours. And the temperature ranges, depending on your settings, are between 80 and 450, or a grill might go up to near 500 on high. And I guess if you're going to be dehydrating outdoors for 12 hours, you want to be somewhere where, you, you know, it's not going to be raining or anything like that on your grill or causing any problems of that sort. So now I'm going to basically do some smoking, and I'm going to fill up the pellet hopper first. I'm using the milder blend because I'm going to be smoking some salmon. So I've got the cup filled up and just carefully pouring it into the hopper here. Well, I guess it's not really a hopper. It's uh, I'm used to using I'm used to using real pellet smokers. So um, I call it a hopper, but it's just really the pellet holder here. So go got them on in there and I'm gonna go ahead and get the food ready and then when I come back I'll be putting the salmon on all right so this is some wild caught salmon that uh, I put some Old Bay seasoning on so just putting that on the grill grate there and going to close things up going to switch over to the smoker setting and I'm going to take the temperature all the way down to 180 and there's one other thing I got to get real quick because I want to track the temperature of my eye grill. For the time I'm going to run the time up because I don't know how long it's going to take but basically I usually smoke till it's a steady 150 in the meat temp so 12 I don't think it's 12 minutes that's probably 12 hours so I'm going to take it down to I don't think it'd take more than three. Well, who knows? I'm gonna make it an even five. We do five hours at 180, and we'll just let it cook until it's a nice 150 for a while. But let me go get the eye grill. All right, got my eye grill too now. So, just gonna get that turned on. There we go. I'll try and put the probe into 
a thick piece of the meat here. Try and keep track of temp. Let's see. I want to make sure that I've got it in there good. There we go. So, stick yeah. I don't want it to mess up, I guess. I don't want it to be too high. I don't want it to be too low. There we go. That feels about just right for me. So, we got 180 for maybe five hours, maybe more. Let me try and, I'm going to try and get this somewhere it won't cost too much hassle. That, that seems good. So go ahead and hit start with that. And it does this ignition thing where it's basically firing up the smoke to make some smoke. And I do want to mention while it's igniting the pellets, I meant to say firing up the pellets to make some smoke, but uh, I guess it shows you the progress. You're supposed to just put the food in, like I mentioned earlier, while it's going through this process. You're supposed to already have the food on. It doesn't do a preheat of the cooker. It's just heating things up for the pellets. And by the way, I forgot to mention too, the salmon is a one and a quarter pound fillet of salmon there. And I do see some smoke just started coming out. It's still going through the ignition process. But the smoke is starting to come out already. And it looks like the salmon is going up in temperature a bit, a little bit. So I guess it's getting hot in the cooker too. It smells nice. I will say that. It definitely smells nice. I can smell it and it smells good. Alright, it seems the ignition part is finished and it started its five hour countdown. I don't think it's going to take that long at all. But when I see the temp at a steady 150 for a while, I'll uh, probably pull things off then. But looks like it's making a good bit of smoke. Like I said, it smells nice. So we'll just let this go ahead and cook for a while. If I were using a full size pellet smoker, I'd probably let it smoke once it's at 150 for like another 30 minutes, maybe an additional 30 minutes while it's at a steady 150 or so. With this cooker, I'm not sure if it's going to, once it reaches the meat temperature 150, if it's going to stay steady for long, so I may not keep it on for long after it reaches 150, maybe a little while, but we'll just let this smoke for now. Okay, so things have been smoking for 45 minutes now. The meat temperature is at 134, and I'm not seeing any smoke anymore. And it came out here after about 30 minutes of smoking. I saw some still, but now I'm out here again at 45 minutes. There's no more smoking coming out. And I look in the holder here, and basically my pellets are, are basically gone. They're basically all cooked up. So basically what happens is this hopper full of pellets gives you about you know somewhere a little over 30 minutes of smoke and that's it i guess i could toss some more in there to get myself a little more smoke if i want but i think i'm just gonna you know leave it with what it has i'm at 134 it's going to basically warm up and finish before long anyway but i know some of you probably you know are all about stopping before 145 for carryover at or at 145 perfectly I go to 150 and then I'll pull mine out once it's uh, at a solid 150 that's just my thing with smoking salmon but we'll let this go ahead and finish doing its thing but that's interesting you get a little hopper pellets it lasts about 30 minutes and that's about all you get unless I guess you wanted to trying to add more or something but that's how it is so the salmon's been smoking for an hour now the meat temperature is 143 and I had to remember something usually I let things smoke to 150 and go about 30 minutes um, at 150 on a full up pellet smoker because I'm trying to get some extra smoke into the meat but given that the pellets are basically gone there's no need to do all that so I'm gonna let it go now it's up to 144 I'm gonna let it go to 145 and just pull it off so 
I'll just basically be back in a sec to get the meat off of here because I think it's going to hit 145 in a moment. All right, things have hit 145, and we basically had a hour and two minutes cooking time to reach 145. So I'm just going to end the cook there and open up, and we see how things look. Looks like it's, uh, I guess it got a good bit of outside smoking all over it, you know. I guess that smoke gave it a good wafting of smoke. And so, it, you know, it doesn't look bad for smoked salmon. But you can let me know how you think it looks in a comment. I'm going to go ahead and get it on off. Something that you should remember is this. You don't want to use anything that will scratch it. No metal type utensils to get your salmon off. And turn this eye grill off now. See if I can get the probe out. I think I didn't turn it off good. There we go. Get the probe on out. Like that. And gonna go ahead and get my salmon out. Let's see. There we go. Alright. I'm gonna just take it on inside and give it like maybe five minutes to just rest. So I just cut off some of it to do a quick taste of, so thank God for some fish and, and a taste. Okay, um, it is a little dry, a little dry, and you know, I could have, I know, stopped it sooner and all, but I like to, I guess, usually I'm, I'm doing this on a full-up pellet smoker, so the tactic I was using is more suited for that than for a electric smoker that only gives you smoke for 30 minutes. But the smoke flavor, it's like a light smoke, it's not like a deep smoke flavor like you would get from a full up pellet smoker but it does give you some smoke so it's like a light smoke flavor on there so basically the cooker is able to give you a little smoke on there but I mean if you're doing like a nine pound brisket you're not going to get smoke for the full for all the hours that you smoke a brisket slow and low with a real deep red you know smoke ring and all that good stuff unless you're like dumping pellets like crazy the whole time or something but uh it can give you a light a light bit of smoke it gives you a light touch of smoke a light touch of real smoke on your meat and that's pretty cool you know especially if you're in a situation where you can't use anything else for your cooking and smoking so it can cook your food up it can do it good it's for outdoors only and give you a light touch of smoke flavor and so that's basically what it does all right so I basically finished that cut that I had in a earlier clip I basically finished that off and you can taste the smoke in there some you, you do taste some smoke when you you know eat more of a bigger piece so it's able to put some smoke on it I wouldn't say that it can stand up to a full up pellet smoker but at the same time it does give you some smoke flavor if you want smoke flavor in your food it is able to do that so it's nice you know it's better than just grilling it on an electric grill with no smoke so it is an added plus in my opinion I do think that it's nice now need to talk about basically cleaning this so I got the notes here and basically they say the grill grate the crisper basket and the grease tray and the base unit itself are not dishwasher safe and they, of course, mentioned never clean the main unit in the dishwasher. The pellet scoop is dishwasher safe, but uh, basically the pellet scoop, I mean, you're not going to be eating off the pellet scoop, so it really doesn't matter about cleaning that in the first place much, really. They say to store it indoors, the, the whole unit indoors when it's not in use. And, uh, and that is in the manual, even though I know they sell a lot of stuff to keep it outside. That's what they say in the manual. They say as far as the pellet holder is concerned, let the pellets all burn out and then empty the smoke box, but you don't have to clean the smoke box. And then they uh, mention 
do not use liquid cleaning solution in the smoke box and you know you don't want your you know, cleaning fluid getting into your smoke box and then basically messing up your smoking of your meat with your cleaning fluid being you know in there even if you try to clean it out good and so they say also to clean everything after every use that's something else to keep in mind and don't use anything abrasive like uh, any scouring pads or anything that are metal you don't want to scratch anything up so if you use like a warm soapy rag and kind of clean everything off do it by hand it should turn out you know pretty decent same thing I do with the indoor grill anyway and you also you know you've got to also make sure that you always get this grease catcher it's got nothing in here this this time because the fish I guess didn't have much fluid to jump off into it so got a bee trying to get on me they don't like me being back here by the fruit trees when they're when they're doing their work so I'm gonna have to get out of here quick but basically the cooker comes with a one-year warranty remember nothing in this video is sponsored you can get like the cookbook the nation's membership merch all that stuff in the video description and if you did like the video give it a thumbs up share the video with a friend leave your comments subscribe hit that notification icon and good eating